Hello, we are going to be doing a water jug and towel workout today. It's a full body workout that consists of four circuits. There's four exercises in each circuit. I am going to be taking you through this workout with a timer set at 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. You, however, if you'd prefer to do this with reps, I just want you to do 10 to 12 reps of every exercise. I'm going to demo uh, the first set for you. Then I'm gonna go through this set with you uh, two times. Uh, uh, at that point, you can go through it again a third time. If you would like, hit pause. You do it you're on your own for that third time. Uh, or we'll, I will go move on and demo that second circuit and we'll go through that two times. So if you're trying to hit this uh, with three times at each circuit, then you're just gonna pause me and do that third uh, time through on your own or rewind me and we'll do it together, okay? But that's the basic setup today for our full body workout that uses equipment that we all have at home. That's why this is so great. It's the water jug, which is about eight pounds. This was a milk jug. We cleaned out, filled with water, put some duct tape around the top, and we're good to go. We've got an eight pound kettlebell right here and a towel for a gliding pad. Uh, I also like using uh, Swiffer, uh, Swiffer pads. Those work well on hard surfaces. If you're on carpet, try a DVD cover that slides well. Uh, paper plate, cookie sheet if you need it. Uh, all you need is something that's going to help you glide over that surface, whether it's carpet or whether it's a hard uh, surface. Uh, hopefully you have done a little warm-up on your own here and now you're with me We're about ready to get started on our first circuit. The first exercise we are going to do is the clean and press Okay With that you're going to get a hold of your water jug go down into that squat I want that torso to stay upright so that I can, as I always say I can read the front of your shirt I don't want you hinging over at the hip Okay, so I go down for my squat, lead with that elbow and press up. Back down, lead with elbow and press. Now, if that's too much for your shoulder or your elbow, you can come up to rack and press. Okay, we're gonna do one side for 30 seconds, then we'll switch and do the other side for 30 seconds. Then you're gonna grab your gliding uh, pad. We're gonna put that under our toe. We're gonna to get into that nice plank positioning. Shoulder stacked over wrist, nice tight core. I'm gonna swing that leg wide that's on that gliding pad. Back, bring it into opposite elbow. Back, swing, opposite elbow. Okay, we'll do 15 seconds on one side. 15 seconds on the other. You'll have to switch that gliding pad or if you have two of them, just keep them on uh, under each foot. And then we've got jumping jack, tap down. Jumping jack, tap down. Keep that torso upright for some of you. You may just get down to here. Some of you may be able to get all the way down and tap that floor. I just want the torso to stay upright. As with everything, tempo here will affect your heart rate, okay? So let's go through this first circuit together. Uh, I'm trying to work with technology. Cindy knows, and all the ladies in our class know, uh, what a disaster this is for me. Uh, so I've got the timer on my watch. I'm videoing on my phone. Fingers crossed that we have some modicum of success with this setup. So, beep, push to all right. Here we go, grab your weight. If you have kettlebells or dumbbells at home, by all means, use them here. Squat and press, lead with that elbow. Tempo will affect heart rate. Lead with elbow or you're racking and pressing. Uh, this is just to show you can use items you have at home to get just as effective a workout as if you had a full room of equipment. Three, two, one. one, break. Switch that weight to the other side. 
The hardest part about using a water jug is just figuring out how to hold it. It feels a little different than the kettlebell or the dumbbell. Here we go. Lead with the elbow and up. Keep that weight close to your body and up. Good. I hope you have your music going. Good. We're down for that ab pretzel touch next. Keep going. Break. I've got the glider under one foot. Stack shoulders and wrists. Swing it out, opposite. Switch, other side. Good. Up for that jumping jack tap down. I don't want to show you how dirty my Swiffer pad gets with this. <laughs> it does not bode well for my cleaning skills. Tempo here will affect your heart rate. If the tap down is too confusing, just go with the jumping jack. You just got to get a rhythm going to it. Break. We're back to that clean and press. Grab that water jug. Torso stays upright. Lead with that elbow. Keep that weight close to your body. I got to move to a spot in our basement where I'm not hitting the ceiling, <laughs> which is not easy. Keep working. Break, other side. Here we go. Lead with that elbow or rack to press. Here we go. Keep it close to the body. You control tempo here. Just with eight pounds, my heart rate is going, as you can all hear. Three, two, one. Good. Rest. That pretzel toe touch. I'm gonna start on the um, other foot. Just, I started on my right last time, I'm gonna start on my left this time. Two, one, swing and touch. Swing, touch. Switch. Three, two, one. Break. Rest. Jumping jack tap downs. Ooh, here we go. Three. Three Two, one. Keep that chest upright. Oh, 
Almost there. Break. Okay. Hit pause here, get a sip of water, come back when you're ready, or hit pause here, go through the circuit one more time. Break. Okay, circuit number two. Our four exercises are gonna look like this. Uh, one like a deadlift plus a close row. What I would like for you to attempt is holding that water jug in the leg that's gonna go back. <clears throat> I put this leg back at the same time my torso goes forward. So it's one movement with my hips being the pivot point there, okay? I'm looking down, keeping that neutral neck, and I'm pulling up for that close row. Pause, pause, down, up, pause, 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 pause. I'd like you to try to hold this deadlift, this one-legged deadlift position while you're doing the row, okay? If that is too much, we're just gonna take a staggered stance here, okay? And we're gonna go down, neutral neck, doing our close row with this staggered stance, okay? We'll do one side, then the other side. Then we've got a knee tuck with with your uh, glider uh, pad, or Swiffer pad, or towel, okay? I've got both toes on that glider. I'm in a hand plank position. Shoulders and wrists are stacked. My core is tight. I pull these knees in and out to plank. Crunch in and out to plank, okay? If that is too much for you, ignore the uh, glider. In, in, out, out with a step. In, in, out, out with a step. Okay? And our cardio with this is a three pulse squat jump. Okay? One, two, three, jump and land soft. I never want to land with stiff knees on this. One, two, Three, one, two, three. Now, if you wanna challenge yourself a little more, you can hold that water jug close to your chest here. One, two, three, one, two, three. I want you to really keep that torso upright. The tendency when we're holding a weight is to start to let that chest, that torso come forward. So if you're gonna hold a weight, really concentrate on keeping that torso upright so we can all read the front of your shirt, okay? So that's circuit two. Let me see if I can get things going here. All right, one armed row, one legged deadlift. Staggered stance or keeping that foot up in the air. Here we go, neutral neck. Give it a pause at the top. Ah, caught it. Sorry, I can't talk and do that at the same time. It takes a lot of concentration for me. All right, here we go, other side. Really pause at the top of that close row. Here we go. Almost there. Three, two, one. Break. Rest. Remember, if you need to do that with a staggered stance, by all means, do so. Plank tuck here. Toes on my Three, Swiffer. Two, one. 
pulling back, crunching back. Keep that core tight and don't let those hips sag. Lost my pad. Break, three pulse squat jump. Land with soft knees. Hold the water jug if you want. If you want to eliminate the jump, it'll be two, one, one, two, three, stand. Okay, one, two, three, jump, soft knees. Good. Think about exploding on that jump. Good, good, good. We're almost there. Break. I'm going to show you this time. So one legged like deadlift, close row. I'm going to do it with a staggered stance this time around so that you can see. Here we go. All my weight is on this plant leg. I hinge at the hip, up, pause at the top. No weight on that kickstand leg. It's all right here. Neutral neck, as always. Pause at the top with that close row, especially since we're using lighter weight than we're used to. Good. Switch sides. Here we go. Plant leg, kickstand, all the weights on this leg, hinge at the hip, close row. Pause at the top, neutral neck. Mind-body connection here, glutes and back. Three, two, one. Break, our plank knee tuck. Try to keep my feet on the Swiffer. Three, two, plank position and tuck. Tuck and kick back. Keep that core tight on that kick back and don't let those hips drop. Almost there. Break. Good. Three pulse jump squat. If you're holding the water jug, keep that torso upright. If you're not jumping to a stand, but pick up the tempo then. Good, land soft. Try to keep that torso upright for me. Good. Three, two, one. Break. Good, good, good. All right. Now, hit pause here, get a sip of water, or hit pause, go through this another time, another two times. You can hit pause, rewind, and do this again so you're doing each circuit for a total of four times. Totally up to you. How much time do you have? What do you feel like on that given day? That's this workout's really versatile that way. Remember, if you're not using the timer, count your reps, okay? But look, my heart rate's up there, and all I'm using is a water jug and a Swiffer mop pad. <laughs> so, sip of water, come on back. 
All right, here we are at circuit three. Uh, the four exercises we have going for us in this circuit are a split squat rack to overhead press. Uh, with this exercise, we don't need the uh, gliders at all, okay? So I'm holding my water jug in the hand of the leg that's going back, okay? So here's my split squat, okay? It's a reverse lunge. My split squat here, down, my weight is here at my shoulder racked. When I come up, I press that overhead, keeping my core tight. My feet never move. Down, press, down, press, press, press. Okay, we'll do the same thing. Then on the other side, we'll get down on our mats here for Russian twists. I'm going to show you several options here with this Russian twist. First option is my heels are down on the ground. I have my hands here straight in front of me. I reach back and look with that straight arm to center. Reach back and look to center, okay? Option one. Option two is still keeping my heels on the ground. I've got my water jug. I'm reaching that over to touch, touch, touch. Option three, bring those heels off the ground. Touch, trying to get a good rotation on those shoulders. Touch, touch, okay? And then our cardio for this circuit is the water jug swing, right? So just like the kettlebell swing, I'm hinging at the hips. This isn't a leg bend, this is a hip hinge. So I try to get my man hands intertwined in my water jug here, hinge at the hip, thrust and bring it forward. Now, because this is so light for me, when that weight gets out to about here, I'm actually trying to pull that back down. Pull, pull, so that I can get a good tempo going on my water jug swing. Usually if I'm using my heavy kettlebell here, the weight of that kettlebell is doing that for me. But because my water jug is eight pounds, if you wanna get more of a tempo going there, think about pulling that water jug down so you can get some momentum going with that, okay? So, circuit three. Split squat rack to overhead press, Russian twist, and the water jug swing. Listen, so far so good with my, uh, my, my timer here, if I do say so myself, get down into that reverse launch hold, wrapped weights at your shoulder, come up and press, down, up and press. You control the tempo here, my feet don't move. Rack at shoulder and press overhead. Good. Keep going, rack and press. Three, two, one. Break, we're gonna switch sides. Whoo, that gets my heart rate going. Get into that Three, reverse lunge. Two, one. Begin. And press, down and press. Get a handle on that water jug that's comfortable. Feet don't move. Keep going. Three, two, one. Break. Rest. Down for your Russian twist. Pull that jug however you want. Three, two, one. I'm going heels up. Here we go. Tap, tap, try to tap that back by your hip, which will force you to get more of a torso rotation, working those obliques a little more. Keep 
keep going. Almost there. Break. Up for our water jug swing. Get a hold on that water jug that's comfortable. I really just get a few fingers in there. Hinge at the hip and go. Remember, it's more of a hip hinge than a squat. Almost there. Break. Whew, I banged myself in the thigh. All right, our split squat, press. Get down into that static reverse. Racked at your shoulder, up and press. Finding the right hold here is part of the challenge. What works with your hand and the water jug. Don't let that wrist flex too much. In other words, keep that wrist strong. Three, two, one. Break, other side. I got a good heart rate going here with the water jug. All right, Three, static two, hold. Up and press. Good. Feet don't move. Being one sided with our weight also challenges our core. Break. Now let's get down for a Russian twist. My heels are up. Here we go. Good shoulder rotation. Whether your heels are up or down, whether you have weight or no weight, rotate those shoulders. Break, back up for a water jug swing. Hinge at the hips, keep that core tight. Here we go. Sort of sounds like my stomach when I work out after drinking coffee. <laughs> Almost there. Excellent. Okay, now, if I know my friend and fellow trainer Michelle, she's hitting pause here, rewind, and she's doing those again. 
I'm guessing she's gonna do a total of four sets. But you're in control. Go through it just two times with me. Hit pause, do it again for three sets, or be like my buddy Michelle, who I promise you is gonna do four times through each circuit. So hit pause here, get a sip of water, come back to me, we'll do our final circuit. Okay, final circuit of our water jug and towel full body workout. The first exercise in this circuit is the good morning, uh, which I love when I've got a bar on my back doing a good morning. It just feels like a great combo stretch and glute workout. So for this good morning, you can see I've rotated this water jug around to my back. Okay, so it's resting there. Uh, sort of between my shoulder blades, not on my neck. It's down there between my shoulder blades. For the good morning, my feet are about hip width apart. I'm gonna hinge at the hips, keeping a nice flat back, and I do that by keeping my core engaged. I'm gonna hinge at the hip, neutral neck, look down between my feet. I'm down to about here for me. That's my flexibility range. Right about here, I feel like my knees are gonna start to bend. So I'm here and I pull up using hamstrings and glutes. Because we've got light weights, really make that mind to body connection here. Hinge, pull up, hamstring and glute. Hinge, pull up using hamstring and glute, okay? Use it as a nice stretch if nothing else, all right? The next one's gonna challenge our upper body and core a little bit, and that's the plank hand walk. Okay, so both feet are going to be on your gliding pad. I get into a hand plank here. That's my starting position. Using my hands, I pull myself forward three or four times, and I push back three or four times, depending on what uh, your space allows. The key here, keep this core tight. I don't want a lot of swaying as I'm pulling forward and back. I want a nice, tight plank position, nice, tight core, okay? And then our final two exercises, the ladies in class love this one. It's a little bit different because we're using the gliding pad. It's the runner's uh, lunge, okay? Here's the key to the runner's lunge. <clears throat> Your starting position here. Here's my plant leg. I have a hand on each side of that foot, not up here. It's flanking my plant, plant foot. If that is too challenging for you, stack up a couple books right here and have your hands elevated on those books, okay? If it's too hard for you to get down on that floor, raise that up with some books here. My back leg is on my gliding pad. And all I'm going to do here, keeping pressure on that pad, is bring that leg up and back. Really gotta concentrate on keeping pressure on that gliding pad or your foot's gonna come off of it. So we'll do one leg, then we'll do the other leg. And those are our four exercises for this last circuit, okay? So we're gonna start with that good morning. Here we go, I think. Get that weight between your shoulder blades. Hinge at those hips. I gotta get my, there we go. Three, See how I'm holding that there? One. Hinge at the hips, here we go. Neutral neck, pull up using hamstring and glute. All I'm thinking about is hamstring and glute. My core is tight. I keep that neutral neck. Real nice stretch right there. Hamstring and glute pulling me back up. Oh, enjoy that stretch. It feels nice. Three, two, one. Break. Rest. Plank hand walk. Get both feet onto that pad. Hand plank position. My hands are pulling me forward and back. If the 
this is too much for you, I just want you to hold a plank for this 30 seconds. Whether it's on your hands or your elbows. Keep that core tight. I don't want a lot of movement with those hips. Break. Good. Now, keep one foot on that pad. Plant leg. Hands flanking the foot on that plant leg. Runner's lunge. Three, two, one. Here we go. I don't want a lot of movement on this plant leg. In other words, it's not going back and forth. Just the foot on the gliding pad. This plant leg should burn. Truth be told, I don't think this is as bad as when we do it without the gliding pad. Break. Now we'll do the other side. So, if you found that pretty easy, you certainly can do a runner's lunge touch and eliminate the gliding pad. Here we go. Hands flanking the foot. Second leg is worse. Almost there. Between the shoulder blades, hinge at the hips, tight core. I try to get my breathing back into a nice rhythm here, keeping that neutral neck. Tight core. It's easy to let it go when we have light weight. Keep that core tight. Break. Hand plank walk. Or just hold that plank. Three, two, one. Here we go. Keep that core tight. hips go a little bit there. Keep it tight. Three, two, one. Good. We got that runner's lunge again. One foot on the pad. Plant foot. Hands planking or flanking the plant foot. Here we go. Have books if you need them. <clears throat> and if you want more of a challenge, do this without the gliding pad. Almost there. Three, two, one. Shake that out real quick. Let's get that last leg in. I think. <laughs> I think this is a side. I've lost all oxygen in the brain. Hands next to foot. Here we go. Oh, it burns. For me, anyhow. Almost there. Keep all the weight on that uh, plant leg. As much as you can. Three, two, one. Rest. Break. Nice work. Nice work. 
Now, again, hip pause. Go through this one more time. Hip pause. Go through this another time. So you're getting in four total sets in each circuit. Totally up to you. You control this workout. We did it on a timer of 3015. You certainly can do this with reps, 10 to 12 of each exercise. Uh, and you can kind of judge that. Uh, for example, that um, uh, runner's lunge, you may get in more than 10 to 12 reps. So you control it, but your guide point, your middle point there is 10 to 12 reps. So listen, I had a good, good calorie burn for me going through each circuit twice. Uh, my heart rate's up, as you can see, I'm sweaty and winded, all using a towel and a water jug. So have fun with it, get your family involved, good full body workout.